So they're five games back after their win last night at, at Kansas City. Have you taken a look at their pitching just since the All-Star break? It Who, probably goes the back. The Tigers? Yeah. I know it's been great. Do you know how many earned runs their starters have given up in the four games since the All-Star break? It's funny because if you went back, you can go back to that that no-hitter they threw and really get after it. But Probably um, could. I, I mean, not too much before that. Uh, in the four games, I, I four earned runs? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Man, yeah, because the two last night were unearned. Unearned. Reese Olsen gave up two. Uh, Michael Lorenzen gave up none. Erod gave up two. The Tigers as a team have a staff ERA of 1.5 wow. coming out of the All-Star break. That's that's nice. And last night, it felt like it was one of those Tiger frustration games as they just weren't they weren't stringing hits together because they weren't hitting. <laughs> it's hard to string hits together when you're not getting hits. Yeah. Um, but the Royals, they went up one nothing on a pretty brutal throw from Akil Badu. And and you see a throw like that and you're like, how can a major leaguer? I mean, it, it, I guess guys just have bad arms. That's all there is to it. And that throw home was somewhat west of home play. Oh, was it, uh, yeah, was I mean, it, it was, where it should have been? No. Um, and then Matt Manning actually made a mistake on the Prado 0-2 pitch. He got too much of the plate. Allowed him to – when Badu threw home, it allowed um, uh, the catcher, the backup catcher, to get down to second and then – um, then a base hit on an 0-2 pitch where Manning just got too much. I mean, just on an 0-2, you can't give up that much of the plate. And the Tigers were down 2 nothing, And it felt like it was going to be another one of those games. And I, I think during the broadcast, they said the Tigers have now reached 20 consecutive innings without scoring a run. Um, And then Akil Badu legs out a double. I mean, that was a, that that was a was, hustle play. That was a hustle play, and uh, good for him making up for the poor throw. Tigers load the bases with two outs. Kerry Carpenter, it's a bases loaded walk. And then Matt Veerling with that uh, looper of a double himself to score two runs and give the Tigers a 3-2 lead. And then the bullpen got the job done, including Alex Lang, a no-sweat 1-2-3 ninth inning. Uh, and I can't remember if it was Foley that gave up the leadoff. It was Foley that gave up the leadoff single in the 10th and then the – or not the 10th, the 8th. Stole second. So there's a runner on the tying runs on second and the eighth with nobody out. It was fully, yeah. And the Tigers get out of it, which included an intentional walk to put the go-ahead run on base, which is always a scary thing, but it worked to perfection. One of the most frustrating things for me as a fan watching the Tigers, and I'm sure every fan base goes through this, it's unproductive outs. Mm -hmm. When you've got a leadoff runner mm -hmm. at first, but you got a runner at first and nobody outs and nobody out, and you don't advance the runner with the next two at-bats, yep. it's frustrating as hell. When that runner's on second base <sighs> and there's nobody out, and then you have unproductive outs like a pop-up or a strikeout, it's just infuriating, and I'm sure it is for for the players and, and the coaching staff as well, but I'm just speaking on behalf as a fan. And that was going on last night. And I, I thought that if this if this is one of these nights of the great pitching, and it's against Kansas City. Kansas City's terrible. You're getting great pitching. You're staying in this game because there's some great defense going on too. Uh, I mean, Akil Badu would look bad throw, but also chased down a, a play in left field that was it was a great play by him. Riley Green, the over shoulder catch in straightaway center field oh, that was ridiculous. I mean, these guys were playing last night, and it, it's the little things that that kind of go unnoticed or taken for granted. The Tigers have the best outfield defense in baseball, and that's a fact. And it's kind of mind blowing when you when you think of who's playing the outfield. I mean, they what, Riley what, Green's a plus outfielder outside of that. I mean, is Veerling a plus outfielder? I, I guess. Well, what metric are you using to? Uh, well, that's I read this a few days ago, and they reinforced it last night. They also had most defensive runs saved Got by it. the outfield. No, that would be a, which would be a, a big metric there. Yep. So it's and it's not like. They don't have spectacular outfielders, but together they're playing great. Um, I think Riley Green is a really good outfielder, and if they yep. you bring up Parker Meadows, it's another one who's a really good outfielder. I mean, that, that throw wouldn't have led you to believe that, but I don't want to make too much out of throw. He doesn't have a great arm, okay? Ooh. Akil Badu. Yeah, well, no, I wasn't. Yeah, I was no, but talking problem. about the outfield. But yeah. at the end of the day, I mean, they found a way to win a game, and, and in the big picture thinking – 
you know, I, I think a lot of us here around Metro Detroit are leaning into this chase for the American League Central because of the void of having interesting baseball this late in the season. So is it fabricated interesting baseball? Is it cir- it's circumstantial interesting baseball? The circumstances have allowed us to care about the wins and losses. And the circumstances are that nobody has taken this thing, you know, taken this thing by the reins and run away with it. And so here are the Tigers loitering near the top. And it's five games. It's five games out, which isn't, I mean, that's not insurmountable. You just keep thinking about with this pitching, which it isn't probably a coincidence. Like, Scooble's going tonight. I mean, Scooble's got eight innings since his return. He's only three, he's thrown 53 or 57 pitches one outing, 63 the other. It's amounted to eight innings, two hits, 11 strikeouts. So I imagine he gets extended a little bit tonight. But with this pitching, you just can't help but think about what, in, what adding and it, a, a bat would do. Like Nolan Arenado. Well, sure. But in the realistic sense, that bat should be added by Javi Baez. Or that bat should be added by Spencer Torkelson. Or that bat should be added by Colt Keith. The bats should be added in-house. And you know, the, all the respect that goes into trying to maintain the rookie status of Colt Keith and you know, wait till there's only so many games less, left so he can still be a rookie next year and they can put themselves in play for that uh that you know that draft the that extra draft, draft pick, pick that you get if you if your rookie that you put on the opening day roster wins the rookie of the year. The Seattle got it this year. Why not call Colt Keith up now for three weeks and then decide? Because if Colt Keith comes up and starts smoking the baseball, just like he's done at every level in the minors, and you start creeping that five-game lead, becomes four, becomes three, becomes two, screw the extra draft pick. Try and win the division. No, I hear you. So call him up now. Uh, it's I'm usually not call him up guy, <laughs> but I'm turning into call him up guy. Call him up guy. We, we've heard from call him up guy for 17 years. I think I think they're led by Pat Caputo. Pat he loves calling up guys. Yeah, and I you know I respect Pat's opinion. I'm not mocking him, but I am turning into call him up guy. Out of real want to see this team add a bat. The I don't mind calling up guys, and and I know my number one reason for not minding it is, is the because it combats the reason that people don't want to call guys up. Why don't you want to call somebody? Well, you start the clock going. So what? Well, then the clock then then they become a free agent one year sooner. Yeah, well, if they're playing great baseball, guess what? They'll never get to free agency because you'll re-sign your own guys. Yeah. You'll give them a contract. I don't ever worry about always oh, going to be closer to free agency if you start the clock going. That to me is dumb. We you need to look at your situation and see. And you can make a very and you are making a very uh, impassioned plea for why it needs to happen now. Um, because if he can help you now. Let them help you now. And if you end up getting no closer after three weeks, you can send them back down and bring them back later if you want or or whatever. And I think the Tigers have to find out where do they get the biggest bang for the buck with the three guys that can be brought up, right? Yes. Because Meadows can play the outfield. Yep. There's no question about that. But he's not as polished of a hitter as the other two guys are. But he can. The other thing Meadows does is he steals bases. Mm-hmm. So defense and, and being able to steal – that works pretty well, and and he does have, I think, a dozen home runs this year. Malloy brings more bang, hits more home runs. He's got 15 home runs right now. He's been, you know, he, he's bounced back nicely in in July with uh, w- with his average, um, but he's kind of positionless player because he's not good defensively. So that's the big knock. Is where do you put him? I mean, if you're going to DH Miggy two out of three games or you know, two out of four games, then yeah, I guess you could put him as DH for the other two games, but I don't know. Colt Keith is the one that you could make the sense out of because he's competent enough as an infielder and certainly as a, and he could definitely DH if he needed to DH, but he's, he's competent enough as an infielder that he can make that difference. And of course he hits a ton. So I'm not going to push you back and say, don't do it. The I, only yeah. thing I'm going to say is I'm going to wait a little bit and, and by a little bit, maybe just a week, the rest of the week and see what, what shakes out here. You know, Javi got benched last night. He's going to pl- play the next three days. According to AJ Hinch, his original plan was, Hey, he, he told Javi over the weekend, I'm not going to play you on the Thursday game against Kansas city. And Javi went back to him and said, 
look, why don't you why don't you sit me out on the Monday because I, I'm just not right yet. Well, Daniel Lynch, the pitcher for Kansas City tonight, Javi's had some success against him. He's 4-13. He's hit a home run. So, I mean, he's had some success. Um, so maybe he can get it going because they just – you look at this team and you go, all right, if they're not trading for a bat, which might not be the best use of your resources to give up a future asset to go get a bat right now, then where can that bat also come from? That bat can come from somewhere in this organization. They've either got to expedite the process of the minor leaguers or figure out some of these major leaguers like Spencer Torkelson, who's back into an almighty funk. Well, he's also he had, he had an eight-game hitting streak and then drew an important walk last night. Um Mixed in but, with about a million strikeouts. I mean, he has been. Yeah, he, he does. I'm, I'm not denying that, but I think with Torque, it's always going to be this work in progress, and and it's he's still leaps and bounds better than he was a year ago. I but know he's about a hundred points less than what you want him to be ideally um, when it comes to his OPS.